What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach Desjardins and I'm an owner and operator of a small HVAC company based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Today's video is gonna be part two of the HVAC ductwork fabrication series. Now I've already constructed the duct as you can see behind me. So today's video is gonna be about insulating that duct, getting the task put on, secured and sealed. Let's do some work. All right, so the tapes that I'm gonna be using today on this duct system, I've got the mastic tape from Sure Tape here. This is gonna be anything on the metal to metal transitions. So whenever I seal those taps to the main trunk line there, this is gonna do a great job at that. And then I also like to use Sure Tape's FSK tape, which is gonna be going on the outside of the insulation to get that nice and sealed as well. Now, what I really like about this is it has a diamond plate finish and texture that matches the outside of that insulation. So it gives you a super clean look. Okay, so I'm gonna be dealing with this 14 inch round pipe along with this three inch fiberglass insulation, which is an R8 value. Now, because it's a three inch thick insulation, the way I measure my insulation to wrap around the pipe properly is I take the 14 inches and I multiply that by pi 3.14. That gives you basically 44 inches. And then what I like to do is add 10 more inches for the thickness of the insulation to go all the way around and a three inch overlap lip that I can go ahead and staple and tape down to make sure it's nice and secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out 54 inches total. And I basically just eyeball it to cut a nice straight shot all the way across. All right, so now that I've got my 54 inch piece cut, what I wanna do is take my knife and cut a three inch tab on this side here. Now again, you don't wanna go all the way through, you just wanna remove the insulation itself. You wanna keep the backing on there because that's what's gonna allow you to have that overlap where you can staple it and tape it. Go ahead and remove all the insulation from the backing itself. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but just make sure you get the majority of it off. All right, now that you've got the insulation laid out, it's tabbed, it's ready to go. Now you just need to get your stapler, get it loaded with some staples, and then you'll be ready to lay the pipe down and get it wrapped. Yeah, so what I like to do is go ahead and get everything prepped and ready to go. You wanna go ahead Get your staple gun loaded up with your staples. That way everything's right there next to you, ready to go. You're not having to fumble around for anything. Okay, so what I like to do is make sure the pipe is overhanging the insulation just a few inches. That way I'll have the room for the flex to connect when I get to the job site. So what I wanna do is grab the side that does not have the tab on it and pull it over and see if we can get it, make sure it lines up right there in the middle. Because again, I want all my seams to be on the same side. Uh, so that looks pretty good. So I'll grab my staple gun, get that in place, go ahead and grab this other side. And I kind of use my legs to pinch to keep everything in place. Now, this looks perfect. I don't want to really pull this insulation over. I wanna, I wanna give it just a nice little smooth rollover. Grab the staple gun and throw Get a few staples in there just to hold it together and then basically you just work your way to the other end and to the other end and smooth the insulation out as you go so again when you're wrapping the pipe you want to make sure you're not pulling this insulation so tight that it flattens down the insulation so what i like to do is pick it up a little bit and pull it tight make it look as good as possible and again you just ever so slightly straightening everything out and throw some staples to it. And then I like to straighten it out as much as I can. Now you just want to turn around and do the other side.
Okay, now that I'm finished stapling this section, what I like to do is just kind of roll it around a little bit, smooth it out as much as I can, just to make it look really nice and neat. What I could do is take this and pull this down just a little bit more. That looks nice. Okay, so the next step is to cut one more 54 inch piece. So that way I can cut me maybe 12 inches or so to get me to the beginning of this reducer. And then we'll be ready to cut our holes out of the insulation. All right, now that I've got this cut at 54 inches with my three inch tab here, what I wanna do is take a look at the pipe that I need to wrap. If you notice, I've got an overhang here. So what I wanna do is peel that back so that way I can get a, a measurement from the actual insulation to where I need to be. So um, the way I like to do on reducers, I don't like to go onto the reducer itself. What I'll do is just run it to where the 14 inch pipe ends. And that way it'll give me some room to play whenever I go to hook up the other duct in the field, I can have plenty of room to secure it and tape it and get it all sealed up properly with no insulation in the way and then if I have to, I'll just put in a little strip when I'm all done to make it look really nice. So that being said, I've got 10 inches of insulation that I need to wrap around that pipe. So the first thing you wanna do is get this tab flipped over and get it all out of your way. Just take it, turn it over, Turn the pipe until it's all the way around, like so. Now get it back to where your seam is on top. Take your new piece and put it in place. Making sure the insulation butts up properly. Wrap it all the way around. Again, don't pull it too tight. Tight enough. Throw some staples in there. And then once you have that secure, you wanna go ahead and flip this tab back over all the way around and throw some staples in that as well. Okay, so now that I've got that tab flipped all the way over, it's looking pretty good. Now I can just start throwing some staples in there as well. All right, that's looking pretty good. So now we just need to grab the FSK tape and get all the seams taped up. And then we'll be ready to cut all the holes out for the taps. Okay, so grab your FSK insulation tape and a pair of scissors. I always think it's best to cut with scissors. It just looks way cleaner. and It's a lot faster that way as well. So what I'm gonna do is run the long seam tape first and then I'll do this one all the way around. So with any tapes, I always recommend grabbing a squeegee. That's gonna really help let that tape adhere to the material way better than using your hand. So you're using some friction there, you're gonna generate some heat to where that's gonna help that adhesive do its job. Okay, so now that I've got that main seam taped up, looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this seam here and get ready to cut some holes. So just like before, when you're wrapping this tape around, you wanna just lay it on the material. You don't wanna pull it really tight. Just 
just lay it on there. I'd say that looks pretty good. Again, one good thing about this tape, because it matches the insulation itself, if you have any areas where the insulation got torn or it just doesn't look as good, take some of the tape, put it right over it, squeegee it down, and it looks good. All right, now that I've got everything sealed and taped properly, the next step is to get all the holes cut out for your taps. So just grab your knife here and uh, start feeling around where they are and just start cutting them out. So now I just need to go around and cut out the rest of the holes. So now that I've got all the holes cut out, insulation is removed, what I like to do when it comes to installing the taps onto the trunk line after it's been insulated, what I'll do is I'll take my knife and I'll just cut four lines just like that. And then I'll take the insulation and I'll basically just turn it in and get it out of the way. And that basically gives me some metal there to where when I put the tap on, I can screw it down, seal it with tape properly, and then unfold the insulation back. And then it looks really clean and nice. Let me show you how I do it. You just take the insulation and you just turn it in like so. You just turn all the insulation in all the way around the hole there. Now that gives you plenty of room to secure your tap and get it all sealed and taped up right. So this is an eight inch. We're gonna grab the eight inch tap. Now, even though these do have a gasket that goes on here, it's never going to be perfect and airtight against the metal. It'll be close, but not perfect. So that being said, you get it on there, get it nice and screwed on, and then you'll use that mastic tape and then you'll seal all the way around. And then you'll know for sure that your tap is good and sealed. So one thing to keep in mind when you're installing these taps is the orientation of the handle of the damper. Now, the way this one is designed, it's either going to go uh, to the left or to the right side, which really honestly doesn't really matter. Normally they're set to where they would be on the top of the bottom, but this particular brand, or maybe the way they installed this one, um, it's either gonna be on the right or the left-hand side. So honestly, for me, it doesn't really matter which direction it goes. So you just wanna eyeball it over the hole, go ahead and push it on down. Grab your drill and screws and get it secured. So on these taps, I like to use a three quarter inch zip screw. That just gives me some more length to where whenever there is a gap like this, it's a lot easier to get secured properly. I basically put about four screws in each tap. All right, once I've got that tap secured, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the mastic tape and go ahead and get this seam sealed all the way around. Um, that way I know it's good to go. Okay, so now that I've got the tape all the way around, again, I wanna take my little squeegee here and just make sure I got good, tight, sealing tape here get in those little cracks and crevices and just really apply that tape and one thing to think about on these taps you actually have two seams that you need to seal the outside here and then also this one here because not again not only are you sealing the duct you're also giving it some strength and rigidity with this tape and that is a seam that could break loose at some point so I like to make sure I tape both seams to get, make sure it's nice and strong. Just to make sure. Make sure it's good and sealed there. 
All right, that looks good. Okay, so once I've got this tap completely secured and sealed, what I can do is just take my insulation and unfold it. And it should come right up to where the tap was. Might be a little bit of a gap. The next thing you wanna do is grab the insulation tape and tape up all of the joints that you just cut. Make sure it looks nice and clean. Then you'll be ready for the flex insulation to come in here and it'll fill that up and uh, be good and sealed and insulated properly. All right, there you go. That's how I install the taps on a duct system that's already been insulated and having the insulation still look really nice after I've installed the tap and got it sealed properly. So all I need to do now is finish the other three. We'll be good to go. All right, there you go. All four taps, sealed, secured, insulation. Looks really nice all the way around the taps. I could even go around a little bit more and make it look a little bit nicer. But once you put the flex on here and the insulation goes on, and then you tape the insulation of the flex to this insulation, it's gonna look seamless, it's gonna look really nice. So I think everything turned out really good. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. Stay tuned for part three, where I'm gonna go out and do some flex duct install, and I'm gonna show you my process with that. Now, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Hit that thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, see you guys later.